Hi, my name is Samir Neil Asher, and this week we're going to be exploring uh, the trigger point of the week is the piriformis muscle. So again, you've heard me saying this on, I think, sadly on every video, but, but this really is a very, very crucial muscle, and we're going to explain why uh, shortly, especially for people with lumbo, pelvic, or, or sac, uh, sort of sciatica. So let's just do a little search here. Let's search the software and we'll find piriformis. So external rotator of the hip. Let's just start with some of the anatomy together. Uh, it takes its origin from the, the, the sort of middle third of the sacrum, the, the uh, inside of the sacrum, and also some of the sacrotuberous ligaments. And then it, it goes laterally, inferiorly, to uh, obliquely to uh, to insert into the greater trochanter of the hip, the superior surface. As we said, it's an external rotator of the hip and as such vulnerable to sort of external rotation or forced uh, injury um, sometimes for example people getting on motorbikes uh, a case I had recently that was very interesting was someone that had been on a long airplane flight and had sat with the buckle uh, under their buttock uh, and that had induced a kind of piriformis uh, type sort of star syndrome so piriformis, uh, why is it interesting? Because, well, let's look at the map first. Um, in terms of the pain map, a lot of people uh, feel pain around the sacroiliac region. Um, and the piriformis is one of the few muscles, one of the two muscles really, that, that has any involvement in the sacrum itself. Some of the fit fibers from the erector spinae do as well. So any sort of sacroiliac uh, derangement, although of course there's some controversy about that, Although clinically, I think many of us agree that there is a relationship with the sacroiliac joint and, and lumbar pain or lumbo pelvic pain or radiculopathy or, or pain in the buttock. Uh, so they tend to be the main kind of presenting symptom areas for piriformis pain. However, we know that in a certain percentage of the population, the sciatic nerve pierces the, the piriformis itself. And what we can get is something we call a, a myopathic uh, sort of uh, a neuropathy or, or a, a, a sort of a, a neuropathic comp a compression impingement syndrome where the, the trigger points in the piriformis make the muscle short and fat and then start squashing on the, the vasa nevorum, the vascular component to the, uh, to, the, to the nerve of the sciatic nerve itself. Or, or the, the sort of the, the venous component or the, the actual neurological component of the nerve. Now what does that mean is that people come in with sciatica. So we talk about pseudo sciatica as opposed to uh, sciatica from a disc. So if you have obviously a radical or radiculopathy where the, the L45, L5, S1, 2, uh, 3 sort of nerve roots are impinged, you can get a sciatica. However, it appears like a sciatica but it's coming from the piriformis or piriformis syndrome. Um, some of the activities that will induce piriformis uh, uh, problems are, like we said, getting on and off of a motorbike, sometimes during forced sexual intercourse, certain positions. Uh, also um, commonly uh, seen uh, in some uh, athletic activities where you're, especially in the gym, where people are taking themselves uh, into certain sort of uh, external rotation positions. Um, the other time is people that are wearing a cast where they're sort of hitching up the, the leg because of the weight of that foot cast or, or broken leg or, or su some such kind of uh, intervention there, orthopedic. Uh, leg length discrepancy, scoliosis, these are other things that can affect the piriformis. So, so hugely important in terms of differential diagnosis for sciatica, as we said, pseudo sciatica or sort of non disc based sciatica, sort of a, a local lower, lower motor neuron kind of uh, sciatica. Uh, piriformis muscle, uh, trigger point of the week. Hope you enjoyed it and we really look forward to seeing you uh, to discover some more next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.